In this video, we shall see CS amplifier with MOSFET as an active load using LT Spice. So, in the previous uh, video, we have actually seen a, a CS amplifier design with uh, MOSFET as an active load. So, in, in the previous video, we have actually estimated the voltage gain of a CS amplifier given in this uh, circuit diagram. Now, the specifications given are VDD is equal to 1.8, we are expecting the current of ID is equal to 1 milliampere and uh, uh, vivo we assumed is 0 0.2 volts uh, we want to have a maximum swing of uh, uh, available spin that is from 0 to vdd as the uh, maximum available swing so in order to utilize this entire swing so we need to have this uh, the voltage at uh, this output point dc point should be half of vdd so that's why we have taken vdsp and vdsn is equal to half of vd which is 900 millivolt we assumed lambda 1 and lambda 2 to be uh, 0.01 volt inverse. We have actually estimated the value of WBL of NMOS and PMOS transistor which is coming out to be 247.77 for NMOS and it is uh, double of that for a PMOS transistor and we have also estimated what is the bias voltage required for the PMOS as well as the NMOS. So NMOS requires a 0.6 of course here also it is minus 0.6 required for which you are supposed to have the voltage at this point as 1.2 volts and uh, we actually estimated the gain to be around 2497.76 close to 500 so we shall just see uh, the same simulation so we shall have a look at uh, how does uh, we are going to simulate the same thing using LT spice so this is uh, the next problem okay this is what we are looking at so dedicating a 200 millivolt for uh, uh, the PMOS transistor remain in saturation and another 200 to uh, for uh, PMOS sorry NMOS transistor to remain in saturation so we have out of uh, 900 millivolt 7 and, uh, 700 millivolt is available for swing so we should just go back to LT spice and uh, rig up the same circuit diagram and then simulate. I can see you now this is a circuit diagram which is being uh, written using LT spice. So now you can see this is NMOS, uh, the way how you will get it from uh, this uh, model, which is from this. Uh, now this is uh, where you get your NMOS. So let us also try to see how do we get PMOS because you are used to NMOS. So when you take PMOS, it will come like this. So when we get a terminal like this, so which is gate, which is source, which is drain. So there is no uh, problem in identifying the gate. This is a gate. Now the question is uh, which is uh, which is uh, source and the drain. Usually the terminal which is close to the gate, that is this is your gate. So this will be usually uh, the source terminal. And once this is source, this will be the drain. And this is uh, the bulk potential. And we know that since it is... Uh, PMOS transistor we are supposed to connect the source to the higher potential so this has to be connected to drain so when this has to be connected to drain so instead of having a connection uh, from this source going to ground using a wire like this we can actually uh, flip this uh, transistor and then make the connection the way how I have just done here so meaning to say you select the device so meaning that okay I have selected the device now this device has been selected do now control E. So control E will going to flip the transistor. Now uh, it, it is facing towards uh, the left side. Now we just rotate twice. Now I have rotated twice. Now this is how you are getting it. Now if I place it now, now you can see this is gate. The terminal source is this and this is your uh, drain terminal. So now you can easily connect this to the VDD. So that's the thing what I did over here. Actually I made this control E that is flipping and then uh, rotate it twice so that the original transistor which was in the opposite direction so the, the original uh, this was the direction of the transistor when it was placed at the beginning so in, in order to have it in this uh, orientation first thing is that you need to select the uh, MOSFET so now the MOSFET has been selected so then say control E control E we are going to flip it and then control R twice. We are going to make the transistor to this orientation. Once you place it like this, now uh, connecting this uh, uh, source to VDD will be done through a wire and this gate will go to the uh, whatever potential that we have over here.
now this is one care we should uh, take while actually connecting the pmos because for pmos uh, uh, always source should be at higher potential and uh, drain should be at lower potential which is exactly opposite to that for nmos so in nmos uh, if it is the source is at lower potential compared to the drain so this is an important care all of you should take while drawing the uh, cmos circuits now you can see uh, we have actually uh, did the connection the whole connection is done now you can see source of this is connected to um, uh, the vdd and this source is connected to ground the source is made 1.8 volt uh, you can just see the parameter that has been specified here so it was assumed that kp of uh, pmos is supposed to be 100 and vto is you can see now it is minus 0 0.4 lambda is equal to 0 0.01 and uh, similarly for NMOS KP is assumed to be 200 micro old, micro ampere per old square. Now VTO is plus 0 0.4. No need to write plus here. So now it is 400 millivolt. Lambda is equal to 0 0.01 volt inverse. Now you can see this is uh, the potential, uh, the bias potential for PMOS, which was uh, found out to be 1.2 volts. I'm connecting 1.2 here. Now I can see uh, I, I'm actually not doing the biasing for this uh, um, NMOS using the resistor. Instead of that, uh, to uh, minimize the uh, uh, circuit connections, I have provided the required bias for the NMOS using this DC offset, which is a 600 millivolt over here in the sine wave itself. Now this sine wave will give 0 0.6 uh, volt as your DC voltage which will act like bias now this is the input voltage this is your frequency all those things now care should be taken that uh, since uh, the bias voltage is given at the source itself you can you are not supposed to put a capacitor here if you put a capacitor here now the DC will not be provided to this gate then it won't work so if you are giving a bias voltage in the source itself so you are not supposed to give uh, a coupling capacitor over here because it will going to block the DC now let us also see what are the dimensions that have been uh, edited for this M1, M2. So M1 NMOS uh, is supposed to have a length of 1 micron and a width of 247.77 micron. So that's what we calculated. And we shall also have a look at what are the dimensions of uh, PMOS. I can see 1 micron length and uh, width is 495.54 micron. So with these dimensions, uh, let us first do the operating uh, DC operating points so in order to utilize the swing effectively we are supposed to have this uh, voltage at output should be having a DC of 0 0.9 and uh, the current should be 1 milliampere so let me just uh, now you can see I have done this uh, dot op now the if I run it now so let us try to find out now you can see uh, the V at the output is a 0 0.9 which is exactly what is required the gate of uh, NMOS it is uh, 0 0.6 and at the VDD it is 1.8 volts and this N002 is the gate of your uh, uh, PMOS uh, you can see the drain current of M2 is uh, minus 1 milliampere because it is going in the opposite direction and ID of M1 is 1 milliampere that's what we expected so now DC con conditions are fine now it is time to apply uh, the AC voltage now of course AC voltage is being applied but we are not seeing the uh, AC analysis uh, we are not seeing in the transient analysis since we are doing only dot OP it's not visible so let me just change the uh, simulation command so let me do the transient now transient 1 millisecond stop time and uh, everything has been set now you can see uh, now it is dot trans 0 1 millisecond and 0 1 microsecond so if I run it now, now the input applied is uh, uh, 600 millivolt DC and uh, 1 millivolt peak uh, sine wave. So we are supposed to get an output voltage of almost uh, 500 millivolt peak at the output because the gain expected is around 497. So that's what we expected the gain. So let me just uh, run it and see what is the gain of uh, this waveform so let me just because we already know the input voltage peak as 1 1 millivolt so its peak to peak would be 2 millivolt so let me verify what is the output peak to peak so in order to verify the output peak to peak let me just uh, place it on the either side of the peaks you can clearly see it is uh, 997.80 uh, 8 millivolt which is uh, 
uh, the output voltage peak to peak divided by 2 millivolt uh, which happens to be almost close to uh, 498 point something so this is what uh, uh, we expected and I can uh, surprisingly see having uh, the MOSFET as an active load which is PMOS over here we could able to get a gain of uh, close to 500 which we are struggling to get using a act oh, sorry passive load so using passive load the maximum gain we are getting was something like 15 16 because if you try to go beyond that it was uh, pushing the active MOSFET transistor into linear region now both are in uh, saturation region and you you are effectively utilizing the swing of uh, almost 500 millivolt here now the gain is also 500 now this way we can actually uh, utilize the MOSFET as an active load and get larger gains we shall also see how do we uh, uh, see this gain in another uh, way so that is we can certainly see the gain using the AC sweep also for that uh, you have to make slight changes here the input should be made as a none and whatever DC voltage that is supposed to be given for that uh, MOSFET let us give it here 0 0.6 the AC amplitude is 1 so let me say ok now since I am not specifying the frequency it will be a frequency response for which I am supposed to change the modulation command also uh, should be AC analysis now let the sweep type be decade and number of points per decade be 100 start frequency 100 hertz and end frequency stop frequency is 1 gigahertz now let me run the uh, now we're going to uh, get a now this has been now we are getting an, a straight line with a gain of uh, 54.05 dBs so if you actually calculate uh, the actual gain in terms of volt per volt 54 dB corresponds to almost uh, 500 so this way we can actually uh, find out of course no need to find out what is a peak to peak of output and peak to peak of input since I have given an input amplitude of uh, 1 this is not actually 1 so it is a mag magnitude of 1 so it is not 1 volt so it is magnitude of 1 so we are getting a, a output voltage having a gain of uh, 54 dBs meaning that the gain is close to 500 so let us see one more design and uh, uh, see the simulations now we shall see one more uh, CS amplifier with active load so here we are asked to uh, design a CS amplifier for a gain of 30 volt per volt assuming idea of 1 milliampere so lambda n and lambda p are different now so now uh, so these are the specifications given and we know we can calculate what is R01, R02 so GM also we can get it from this expression that is uh, since we know what is AV so we can estimate the value of uh, GM so which comes out to be this so since we know what is uh, VOV so this is what we discussed in the previous uh, video so upon doing all these things we actually estimated the dimensions of uh, devices uh, uh, of NMOS and PMOS as so and so so by assuming this as a uh, 0.18 micron the W of N and W of P are coming out to be uh, so and so and uh, the bias voltage of your NMOS is supposed to be 0 0.62 volts whereas for PMOS it is 1.18 voltage so let us uh, just do the simulation using LT spice and then come back and verify the gain now this is LT spice uh, uh, circuit so as you can see now we have modified the model parameters of uh, PMOS and NMOS now lambda is 0.2 and lambda is 0.1 so this is what is specified in the uh, design and we have modified the dimensions of NMOS and PMOS so which is over here now it is uh, 0 0.18 and 63.03 and similarly for this it is uh, uh, 0 0.18 is the length and 34.11 is the uh, length sorry width of the transistor now we shall see uh, the dot op of that that is the operating conditions so if you see the operating conditions here also we assume that so to have maximum possible swing the output should be at uh, you can see it is almost at uh, 900 millivolt that is 900.83803 millivolt so which is fairly good so we should do the simulation and verify the gain of this so let me just uh, run the simulation for uh, verifying the gain now the simulation has been done so this is the output voltage I can see the peak to peak of this output voltage is almost 66 millivolt which is swinging around uh, 900 millivolt 
So since the input voltage is 1 millivolt, uh, the peak to peak of input is 2 millivolt, the output peak to peak is 66, so the gain is 30 